truth is I'm so dang normal. I'm kind of a freak, right? Like I'm married. I have two little boys. Uh, but the weird part is I had my kids after I got married. Who, who does that crap anymore, right? Who does that? And this is really weird, but uh, I got pregnant by my own husband. <laughs> what a loser! I am such a loser. Please put your hands together and have some fun with Miss Frances Di Lorenzo. Come on, everybody, let her hear it. I am in a good mood, you guys. I'm very excited to be here. I'm Frances Di Lorenzo. I am the mother of two boys. They are eight and. 10 years old. Not only am I excited about being here, but uh, yesterday was a huge day for me, you guys. I just celebrated my 15 year wedding anniversary. 15 years! Thank you! Oh my gosh, thank you so much. I usually don't even mention I'm married on stage because it makes it so much harder to get laid after the show. But, um,. <laughs> I'm kidding, I love my husband, I do. And I'm proud that we've made it all these years because we are so different. And uh, whenever I say that, everybody tries to make me feel better. They always say, well, you know, opposites attract. And I guess it's true, right? Because like, he's an introvert, I'm an extrovert, you know, he's a vegetarian, I'm a lesbian. <laughs> and, um... I think it's crucial to have a sense of humor uh, when you have children. As a matter of fact, I use my sense of humor to even get pregnant because um, most women want to hear how sexy and beautiful they are, and I was like, I'm all about stand-up. I was like the only woman that ever wants to be in bed and hear a man say, you know what you did just now cracked me up. Like, like that's what I wanted to hear my husband say, that was so funny, you know, and I'm doing all my moves. Everybody warned me, they said, you know, when you have kids, they're like, oh my gosh, kids will change your life, right? Everybody says that. And I thought everybody was whining, but it's true. And what's the first thing that changes people? Your sex life, right, right? And you wanna know why? Because it used to be like free and carefree and like, what? you know, whenever. Now all of a sudden your whole house is filled with toys. Every single toy makes a noise and you can't get that crap out of your head. <laughs> Seriously, like one time I was making love to my husband, but all I could hear in my brain is the wheels on the bus go round and round. <laughs> And then I started getting into it. I'm like, round and round, wheels on the bus, you know? And then my husband's like, oh my gosh, you are so fired up, you know? He was. He was very excited about it, you know? But I was like, I just want to finish the freaking song. I start yelling out, make it stop, make it stop, make it stop, which is something you shouldn't say when you're having sex. You're just, just, that's just bad bedroom talk right there. It is. I think a lot of people think that as a, if you're a female comic and if you're a mom comic that your fan base is all moms. And I find that's totally not true. I have a huge uh, fan base as males. Um, they probably were follow over from my stripper days. But anyways, um, I got huge laughs. I'd be like, woo! And then they're like, now that shit's funny. But anyways, it worked. I'm not gonna lie, I always screw up the bedroom talk. I do. One time I heard myself say, good boy! <laughs> <laughs> no, then we got done and I'm like, yay, you did it! You did it, you did so good! Yes, you did, yes, you did! <laughs> Not gonna lie, he did really good. He did really, really good. So I gave him a treat. And now I'm like, here's a cookie. You know, because I wanted him to remember. Oh, man, I was excited to get pregnant. I liked being pregnant. I really did. I don't know about you ladies, but uh, oh my gosh, it was it was great, except I have a gripe. Like I think uh what's with the OBGYNs all being men, right, ladies? What's up with that? We need some women. They need to be yeah. women so we can bond and relate and it's just awkward, man. Uh, you know, because I, like, I, I went in, I, I met my doctor, and he was like, not only was he male, but he was like 189 years old, right? Like grandpa doctor, you know? I, and, and I was afraid to ask questions, my first baby, you know, because I didn't want to say the vagina word. <laughs> right? So I ended up talking in code. I'm like, hey, doctor, I'm having some bad weather in Baja, you know? <laughs> I thought he would get it, but he just stared at me, right? So I kept trying. I'm like, hey, I uh, think I chipped my fine china. There's bad guys in my basement. 
crazy. It went on and on and on. So the second time I got pregnant, I didn't want to go through that again. So I demanded a new doctor thinking they'll send in a female. I can bond and relate and chill out. Well, this time they sent in another man, but he was hot. Oh my God. Uh Ladies, have you ever had that? Like that should be illegal, right? A hot OBGYN. No way, because we're all like hormonal, right? Right? And this George Clooney kind of guy walks in, and oh my God, not only was he handsome, he was charming. Because after my first visit, he puts his hand on my back to help me sit up, and he's like, Okay, I'll see you in two weeks. I'm like, Oh my God, I think he likes me. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, it was crazy. So now every appointment is more like a date. You know, I had to do hair, makeup, <laughs> fishnets. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> it was nuts. And he was a t- total take control kind of guy because he's like, lay back, slide down. I'm like, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. I'm like, can we dim the lights a little, you know? And the, like, how about some wine? You know? Because <laughs> I brought some. And that's the type of stuff you start talking to your girlfriends about, right? Right, girlfriends, oh my gosh. Girls, we love to talk, love to talk. Man, women go a little crazy when we start talking to each other. It's either we're at a bar having a drink, or um, women, you get a phone in their ear, you turn up upside down, they never stop. It's just in the teenage years, and moms in the department store planning birthday parties. Get off the phone in the department store, ladies. You're embarrassing me. I don't care if you bring a salad or dessert. Let me look for shoes. But I'll tell you what, women are a little messed up on the phone. I don't know what it is. It starts in teenage years. Guys keep it simple. Have you ever seen like teenage boys talking on the phone? They don't even use sentences. They just make sounds. Have you ever noticed that? You guys aren't big talkers, are you? Right, you get two guys on the phone. They're like this, they're like, hey, what's up? Going? I eat later. <laughs> They just make sounds and they know exactly where, when, and what kind of beer to bring, you know? <laughs> you get teenage girls on the phone, though, oh my gosh, they turn into rambling contortionists. Have you ever seen that? It's like, oh my gosh, Cindy, I haven't talked to you in so long, and so much has happened since this morning. I went to the mall, and I got this really cool blue skirt, and I was like all excited, except for when I got home, I realized I should've never got blue, because ever since Mark and I broke, got, oh my God, my legs are so white. Anyways, <laughs> that's what I realized. I ran into Lynn at the mall, right? And she is three days late. I can't even believe that she's three days late because, oh my God, she is too ugly to even get late. But that's when I was thinking like, what, what? Oh, okay, well, when Cindy gets home, could you tell her I called? (laughs) Thank you. Oh my gosh, what an amazing crowd. That was so much fun. I hope you laughed uh, wherever you are sitting behind your computer screen or uh, on your phone. Moms, just let it go, laugh it off. You know what, don't lose the child within yourself.